Hey guys, welcome back to the Small Engine Nation channel. My name is Phil, and in today's video, we are gonna be replacing the auger shoot directional control cable. As you can see, this one still works, but what I have trouble is in the winter time, when I'm actually snow blowing snow, I take it with me to my route, and what happens is water gets in here, and it freezes, and it freezes the cable from moving. As you can see, I had to bend it and unbend it and pull it out, and it's just so frustrating when it freezes up on me like that. And the reason why it freezes is because it's actually missing a weatherproof cover, and that ripped off a while ago, and I didn't think that that would actually affect anything, but that's why those covers are there. So we're actually gonna replace the cable. I did buy an OEM one off Amazon. Let's go ahead and tear into this packaging here. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And this is the weatherproof cover that I was talking about. As you can see, it's just a rubber piece. What it does is it protects um, the cable from actually being exposed to the water and ice and whatnot. So, and as you can see, there's the cable. It is an OEM. I will have a link in the description down below of where you can purchase one of these. So in order to remove the cable, we'll do the front end first. What I like to do is simply go ahead and pull this all the way forward. And usually you have no issues removing the little end piece here. And as you can see, we are having a little bit of an issue uh, just sliding it out. So what we're going to do, hey, there you go. Slid, slid right out. I was gonna get a, a pair of pliers on it, but it looks like we don't need to. I did make this tool out of brass. What I did is I cut out a little slot here, and this tool is exactly what it's made for. It's made for removing the clips from the cable or from the housing, and you can use this for mowers. What you gotta do is just press all the way down, and it'll squeeze both sides, and then the cable will actually can be removed now. As you can see, you do have two squeezable tabs here. That's why, that's how it holds on to the chute. And you can get some needle nose pliers and press it down, but I've just made a tool here that squeezes both sides when you push down on it. You just gotta make sure that the cutout is there. And that way, when you push all the way down, it squeezes both sides, as you can see there. So now we got this side, we're gonna go ahead and work on the other side. And real quick, there is a rubber a hook that the cable runs over. We're just gonna go ahead and remove it. As you can see, all it does is that. So we're gonna remove that side and push the cable all the way to the handle control. And on down to the back side again, we are replacing the auger shoot lever control, a directional control cable. And there is the end piece there, the ring, and it's held on by a little cotter pin. So we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves some pliers and remove that pin. Now basically it's pretty easy on how to remove a pin. I'm sure you guys know uh, what you can do. I'm gonna try to do this one-handed with a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay, I got one side. Just pull the rest out. And now you can simply take the ring off. And then this should be able to slide out, but it is locked into place. So we're just gonna get our, I believe it's a half inch wrench, but I will uh, make sure um, when, when we go ahead and loosen up the nuts. So it does take a half inch wrench. We're just gonna go ahead and remember the point of how many threads you have out here because that will be important when you go ahead and install. And I think this cable might be slightly unadjusted. So we're gonna go ahead and just adjust it while we're at it. So uh, let's go ahead and loosen up this nut here. That should be able to um, free up the connection. So now we can take the whole cable and take it all out. If you have done all the parts of the removal, there's your old cable. And what I always do with cables is lay them out and just to make sure that they are the same size and I have already checked, but these are perfectly the same size, same OEM part number. These aren't, this is not an aftermarket cable. So if you use my link that I have in the description, you will get yourself an OEM um, Aaron's uh, part number uh, cable. So. Go ahead and check that out in the description. So there's two nuts right here on the end that we're gonna install first. I'm just gonna loosen them up, but I'm not gonna touch this bottom one here. I'm just gonna let it be. And what we'll see is um, we're just gonna install it first and then tighten up the nut. Just snug it up for now. Go ahead and grab your ring and also the pin 
that you removed to hold um, that ring ringside cable in place. So like so. Again, we don't need to tighten this up a lot. Uh, just make sure it is in place. We're gonna run our cable all the way to the back side here. And remember to hook it on to the bottom hook right here. And you can go ahead and bend this hook in a little bit. It is metal, it's got a rubber around, coating around it. And now we can simply go ahead and install this end. This is how you do it. You just push this rubber up, put the cable through, and then clip the um, metal clip inside. Like so, just push it and it'll pop open the clips and hold into place. So now we just need to install the cable. Now the most simple way of installing this side, I'm gonna show you right now. You push down on your chute all the way, make a little loop here, and you want to go ahead and install the metal piece like so with your loop going around. Once you push your metal piece all the way in, you want to go ahead and slowly release the cable inside of the groove. And what will happen is something like this, like so. And now you can simply release um, the tension on the spring with your shoe. And that is basically concludes on how to install that side, the middle clip, and also the end piece. Now we're gonna go ahead and adjust it. Now to see if this cable actually does need adjusting, what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna test it out. So again, we are going to decrease the um, directional control. So we're gonna put take this cable or knob to the left and we're gonna go all the way up and we're just gonna see if it will make the uh, directional shoot uh, go forward or down, uh, push down or forward. So push all the way forward. As you can see, it goes all the way down and then we can push this to the right and it locks into place. So we have a lot of tension on this cable. There shouldn't be this much tension. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna loosen up the nut here and then bring this cable, I'm sorry. Yeah, loosen up that nut, bring this cable back out and loosen up this nut here, bring it back just a little bit and then put it back into place. And now, if we bring this back, it goes all the way back. And if we bring it forward, as you can see now, it's bottoming out. And it's actually going to be um, shooting your snow parallel with the road. Now, we can go just a little bit farther down. But I do not like to run the snowblowers like this because I have, find no need to bring them all the way down like that. I like to keep them parallel. With these bigger snow blowers, you're more than likely going to be shooting some snow across the road or across the fence or something like that. Uh, but if you do need to make more adjustment to bring that direction of control farther down, you do have a few more threads to work with. But I find it pretty safe here. Um, just for my application, that's where we're going to hold on to and be there. So we're going to go ahead and take our half inch wrench and tighten up the nut there. You don't need to torque it down. It just needs to be held into place. The back one obviously ties up, tightens up as well. So that's basically how you change out a shoot directional control cable on an Aaron's 1130 DLE snowblower. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have ever replaced one of these. And if not, I would appreciate if you hit the like button, if this video was helpful and informative. Um, and also, be sure to subscribe. We do have some more tool videos coming out, some more small engineer repair on the way as well. And also, we do have a podcast where we talk about starting a small engineer repair business, the basics, the problems, the prices, and whatnot. So, hope you guys enjoy. Again, subscribe if you haven't already. And in the meantime, take care. Have a wonderful day. And just real quick, I forgot to mention, you can go ahead and slide your rubber all the way down to the clip so that way no water actually enters into the cable. All right, take care, bye.